good morning. It, what are we? Monday. It's a Monday here. Had a good weekend, but um, these lambs, so they got drenched, um, what's that, eight days ago on the, on the Friday. Will they go? Don't get them on. Will they go? Eh no ho. You be quiet. Eh no ho. Quiet. Get up here. So I'm just holding them here with the hen dogs and Duke, and I'm going to get a fecal egg count off them. So they got a, um, a single acting drench called, um, I can't remember, but it's a moxidectin. Um, so that uh, protects them against homonchus or barber's pole um, for I think it's 25 or 35 days. It's quite a long time. Will I go, Doke? That dog. Eh, no, ho. Stay there. So it doesn't get the other um, worms. So I just want to check, see how many other worms are in there, I guess. So, ah, uh, Doke, get, go and get up. Go and get up, Doke. Um, and these boys are being nosy, which is annoying because I know what they're going to do. They're probably going to run through my sheep. So I'm holding them in the corner so they all poo there. And then I'll go in afterwards with my um, gloves and and uh, uh, little pottles. You'll see. And then I'm going to take. I'm going to whip them into town. Hopefully they go on the courier before um, the end of the day and get the results back tomorrow evening. And then they'll probably need a drench, I'd say. So I don't know. I mean, it's good to know exactly you know um what's the saying something like uh assumptions uh oh, what is it something like assumptions are the the start of every f i'm gonna look it up the saying is assumptions are the mother of all f but um yeah so i want to know exactly what's in them um or at least yeah know how many worms are left over because all of the homonchus worms should be gone um by now because it is yeah eight days I guess it's slightly early, usually go 10 to 14 days post drench, but um, they should have gotten rid of those worms. Um, and so apparently with the homonchus, uh, they won't be they won't be um, daggy and they won't be all um, shitty around their ass. But with the um, trikes and osteotagia, they'll be um, shitty. Um, so the homonchus are a blood sucking um, worm. So they will um, really have an effect on the lambs big time, and they can they actually can kill um, sheep pretty easy. Um, I was talking to um, our stock agent and farmer, and he was saying that yeah, you can just see them. They'll they'll just they'll go backwards, and they can die within a couple of days if they if they got really bad um, uh, worm burden with the with the homonchus. So um, yeah, so so the ones that are shitty have more than likely got. Osteotaga or um, trikes, but the ones that aren't shitty, the clean ones, they still could have homonchus, but I've drenched them with a homonchus drench, so um, they shouldn't have that. So the homonchus is the uh, blood sucking parasite, well, worm, basically. And apparently, the it's not just so the, um, the larvae don't cause a problem with the osteotagia or the um, trikes, but the um, homonchus. Apparently, the larvae actually um, uh, cause problems as well. The larvae will actually be blood sucking as well as the um, what do you call is it? L four, which is um, like an adult worm. So um, hey, yeah, the dogs are a bit nervous about these buggers. These so uh, these are um, homebred steers, um, and that's why they're pretty friendly. They were on the crop all winter, um, and they're looking pretty good. Uh, they could be looking slightly better, I guess. Um, they will need a copper and selenium this um, autumn. So I'll give them that in the next month or so. Um, but they're looking pretty good at the moment. You can see if they're um, copper deficient by their coat. Um, it won't be quite as shiny. Um, they'll be. They'll just look a little bit um, dull, I guess. And so, yeah, you get better growth rates when they've got heaps of copper and selenium in them. Um, but like humans, we need our... Um, supplements too even though some people a lot of people don't take supplements for anything which um i don't know each their own i'll give them another five minutes i've got to stop watch make sure there's enough crap there for me to pick up i need 10 of them uh, two fives hey doke come on mate and then whip into town so just a discussion while i've got you here so these lambs i don't know what that average i'm um, just looking at them I don't think they'd average much over um, 32, 33. There's some good ones in there, but I need them basically, ideally, 
it would be great if I could put them all to the ram at, you know, 50 kilos. But um, how long have we got? 22nd of April. It's the end of Feb. So we've got a, a close, about two months uh, to put, how many kilos was I saying? Well, that would be 18 kilos. While I go, Duke, 18 kilos divided by 60 days, that'd be some phenomenal number, I'd say. It'd be something like 400 grams a day. I might not be. No, I might not be. Um, hey. Go, pup. Go. Go, pup. Pup's going to get them. Go, go. But, yeah, it's going to be hard for me to get them up to weight. And I feel like they haven't been performing just because um, of the worms. Uh, it's hard enough, November, December. Um, they were weaned la uh, lighter. Um, so, yeah, it has been a hard enough season, although we've had good rain. Um, so I don't know what other people's lambs are looking like, um, but these things, in my opinion, I mean, they've got a long way to go. I've got the feed for them right now. This is uh, really, yeah, the, this is the best part of farming, I think. You get to um, walk around and search for poo. Um, so just one of those jobs that you just, you know, you love, you know, you look forward to. Um, so I'm doing that. So there is a bit of poo here. I was a little bit nervous that that didn't really work and I was going to have to get them in and just catch them out and then put my hand up their bum but um, I think I've got some poo here, look there, there's a, there's a bit of poo, um, so I'm going to grab this poo and um, I think the uh, the vet said to me um, earlier that you, you kind of want to get some solid poos and some runny poos um, to make it a bit more um, even uh, if I'm just selecting poos then it, it doesn't really help me because um, I want a representative um, sample don't I that's a good one so I'll just scoop that up there's probably enough um, poo videoing for me outside Duke get outside um, so you might see me in the ute taking it into town or something but um there's probably enough about the poo well I've shifted some stock and uh, now it's smoko time so my brother's just purchased a new coffee machine so He's gotten right into um, how he makes his coffees. I think I did an okay job with the frothing of the milk. Um, I've just got one of those Breville, Breville machines. You can see right there. Barista Express Impress. But the I don't know about my grind or um, the flavour of the coffee might not be quite as good as what it could be. And um, Annabelle got some of these in the mail. Double stuffed, I think. That's a really good idea. I don't know why they don't just make, you know, double stuffed anyway, you know. Definitely have a few of these. And then I'm off to town, take those, the poo samples in. And um, oh, I messaged the vet, he, he said they don't actually have to be there till one. Got a bit of time, so ended up shifting some mobs. Shift the tutus, the one-year-olds, um, the mixed stage with the cows, the fat ones, and also the light mixed stage. They went out the back again. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of grass still growing and we're supposed to get some rain this evening. So hopefully that comes. Although yesterday we were supposed to get some rain and we might've got half a mil. It was just a drizzle while nice I was loading the steers. So yeah, got them on That's the truck, solid. 20 steers. They were looking really good actually, quite happy with that. So, um, yeah, look at that, double stuffed. Good morning, I've gotten the results back from the um, poo samples I took in the other day. Um, and the results were pretty good. I mean, not not perfect, so they've definitely still got some worms in them. Um, but they have reduced from what they were 13 days ago. So um, the moxidectin that I gave them has worked, but it hasn't cleaned them out. So the vet was saying that they're more than likely trikes in there and they'll be obviously resistant to moxidectin so i've got um actually annabelle picked me up some um zolvix so this is a new drench that um we're using so um yeah you come resistant to one drench so you move on to the better one which seems mad but um it's it works so um i'm gonna go get those hoggets in now and I'm going to give them um, five mils of this. I've just used a, um, an old syringe 
to check that my um, drench gun is working properly. So this stuff can catch people out if they don't read the instructions. Um, this is half a dose. Um, most drenches are one mil to five kilos. This drench is uh, one mil to 10 kilos. So um, I've got it at five mils. So I don't think there's any in there over 50 kilos. So um, five mils, 10 kilos, 50 kilos. So I'm gonna go do that. Now um, we've got one of these guns that you buy. They're pretty good. Um, uh, you, you buy them from, I think, Palmerston North. They make them in Palmerston North, which is about an hour and a half from here. You can buy the cheap plastic ones, but um, these things last a bit longer and a uh, bit better quality. So this stuff should clean them out. So they get this in February and then they'll get a um, another one in uh, May, I'd say, and then probably just a, a normal triple at uh, June. So good to um, know what's happening in those, in those lambs and then um, I can get that sorted and they will have no burden and should grow. So that's, that's the aim. So we're good to go, bring them in here. This tree's actually really handy in the summer, although it is ruining that strainer. So these lambs are out here on this pretty good tucker. Um, I shipped them, when did I ship them? Oh, when I got the um, bigger weed counts. So um, that was Monday, today's Wednesday. So they've had two days in there. Um, I've been recommended to just keep them shifting them so that um, because they uh, sit and they um, poo everywhere and they um, take the best stuff out um, so they kind of like foul up the grass is what um, is a term that I've been uh, um, told so I'm just trying to um, shift them around so they'll cut, they'll um, get this drench probably over a dollar a head um, I think that five litres is something like something crazy Get him behind Duke. Might be thirteen hundred dollars or so. Um, yeah, they'll get this drench and then they'll go into this paddock. So this paddock's a bit fresher, and then into there, and um, then they'll probably come back around to another paddock up up behind here. This is the bottom of the new pine trees. So the new pine trees are just over there, and uh, as you can see, this got pretty rank because it's at the bottom of the pine tree, so we couldn't really um, graze it, but. New fence up there, uh, put the um, light ewes in here and um, they've also got another 5 hectare flat paddock down there so um, they're doing a good job in here, um, take out the good stuff. I'm actually going to shift them the Savo around to another paddock and then the um, fats, the fat ewes and the cows can come in here, chill it out hopefully. Get them on pup, get them on pup, get them on dog. Pip's going okay, I still haven't put sides on her, I think her confidence is pretty much there to do that, um, I'm not, haven't broken in many dogs, it's basically Gus and Bear and May, but I sold May, well I go pup, get pup, get pup, get pup, Sit down, up. There we go. Yep, up. Get in, pup. Well, that's what pup can do. She's pretty speedy, and yeah, she's learning. She's learning where she should be at the right time, and then soon. Get him behind, dude. Get him behind. Um, soon. Um. I'll put sides on her and then um, she'll know exactly where she should be. So each dog should be in the right spot at the right time um, and they should be told where to be, not just be where they think they should be because otherwise you just get dogs that think they know it all and they never do because you're always changing where you're putting your stock. Gateway, which is typical. Now, what I want to do is get a dog over there on the left so that 
those lambs can keep going straight through the um, lane over. Um, I don't think Duke will do that. Stay there, late! Unless I go all the way up to the um, things there. Sit down, pup! Get on bed. So um, we'll see if he'll do it. Get over, Doug! There you go, that's them all drenched. They're happily walking out straight into their paddock. Um, so they should be bloody happy, those um, those girls. Um, I did hear a few coughing, so there might be um, a little bit of viral pneumonia in there. Um, just bringing them into the yards when they start puffing, um, you'll hear them. You'll hear them coughing. Um, if you can hear them coughing um, late at night, then uh, you got a problem. Um, but well, you know, if you're not around them you can hear them in the hills then uh you know you definitely got a bit of ill thrift from that but um yeah now they they aren't too bad i think a month and a half or oh, close to two months anyway in between a month and a half and two months um before the ram goes out so got a bit of time um they come back in in about 20 days for um their toxin campy so that's um protects against uh abortions from cats and also um, Campylobacter, which is spread from sheep to sheep. And then, um, unfortunately, I can't, because of the um, um, drench program I've got at the moment, it's not gonna line up, so I can't drench them as well. So they'll probably have to come back in for another drench and then another Toxone Campy. Um, sorry, uh, Toxos just once, uh, Campy and a uh, five and one. Um, so middle of next month, it'll be Tox on Campy, middle of um, April, it'll be a Campy and a five and one. So um, they'll be well looked after and they'll come in a few times. But um, just because we had Barber's Pole or Homonchus, uh, uh, same thing, different name, um, uh, I had to get them in and give them an earlier drench. And then, because I did that, I thought, well, I might as well check if the moxidectin, the, the homonchus or barber's pole drench has done the whole job, um, because um, it doesn't actually uh, properly protect against um, uh, these other two worms. So um, it hadn't quite done the job, 
that's why I've come in with this expensive drench and newer drench to um, sort that out. So they, after this, they should have no worms. Yeah, it's basically like a fresh start. Um, and uh, I'll give them, uh, they'll still get a, a drench every month, um, which has the selenium in it as well. And I think cobalt, so, um, which is like B12. I'm just seeing pup around these. Gut, gut, pup. Come sit down, pup. Gut, pup. Gut, pup. Oh, yeah, she's doing it. I think she's got them all. Hope that those other ones in there are um, on the other side of the fence, but they might not be. Go on, sit down, pup! Go on, sit down, pup! Oh, it looks like they are. Alright, well, we're just going to push them down the hill. There you go, some of them are already grazing. Well, that's them. Get them on. Yeah, so. I'm here in the back country, shifting these light ewes. Um, I've got the drone here for you, so you can see. I'm just going to take them around a gully um, and into the ne next paddocks. there from high enough um, and yeah not ideal um, yeah but look at them they're, they're into it it's why you um, shift them regularly so they get that fresh pick probably only last some day oh, oh, I don't know I'd rather not move them tomorrow so maybe give them two days in there and then um, on to the next one I'm going to bring down the um, fat ewes and the cows into this um, this paddock down here. There's still a fair bit of feed and a lot of roughage in where we put that new fence. So um, need to get need to start having a crack at that. So um, yep. So here we are at the top of the farm. We've got the uh, main water tank here. So um, as I've, I think I've said before, um, so our water actually comes from a hill way over in the distance. Uh, gravity feed here, gravity feed onto the farm, and yeah, so this is the main tank, gets gravity fed down here. Um, the uh, grandfather and um, the old man have had a, um, a lot to do with the water scheme, um, and I th my grandfather was here, I'm pretty sure when they put it in, yeah, it was in the 70s, yeah, he was here, so he um, he's done all the maps and everything like that, so we know exactly where the water pipes are going. So um, good to um, I've done a good job here, and it's a cool system that we've got. But um, what I'm here for is to get those ewes and cows and calves, bring them up here, and um, take them down to uh, that paddock down there that I just shifted the lights out of. So we're going to do that. Well, let's start the muster. taking a bit of work to get these out of here it's a bit of a funny gate you just got to get them leading um, and then I'm sure I'm gonna have to put a dog around to the left so they go through that gate and then down the other side 
but um, we got them. I think next time I might take them down and then through the gate up the lane and um, up that way. Yeah, that was it was a bit of a challenge, but hey, love a challenge. So I just need to chuck a dog over this fence, get him to run along here, and he can um, keep them going up to that gate instead of um, hooking down the left. Get him behind, dog. Get him behind. Don't need you mucking around. Will I go, B? Will I go, B? Come on. Will I go? Yeah, good boy. Get up, dog. See, there's a few there. Oh, got you upside down. What's going on here? A few there that have obviously come down the track. Hopefully, Gus Bear gets them on the right way. to keep moving. Notice these cows coming down the bank just to eat this weed. I don't know what it is but basically that stuff. Somebody will know what it is. But it's interesting that they're climbing down the bank just to eat this stuff. They obviously enjoy it. Don't fall off girls. She's steep enough. Well, unfortunately I haven't been right up on them, otherwise um, we'd just have them on the track, which would be nice. But cows and ewes are a bit annoying. Get in, pup! Well, I go, pup! But um, we're getting them. Um, hopefully the cows don't just sit in those yards like last time. Last time they just sat in there and it was a pain in the bum. And there's Bear down here. He'll come up there and just push them in through that gate there. And then the rest should go in through there. Gus is um, up here at the moment. He should bring them along. There's a few up there too. This is the um, annoying thing when you don't keep right up on them. It's just these cows haven't been uh, walking along very well. It's not that warm. It's still only, I don't know, 18, 19. The cows have been packing up a bit. I'm not happy about getting shifted so such a um, distance. So um, anyway, we'll get them there where I want them. Stand up! Stay there. Ewes can go their own way, but ideally the cows can go down the track of it. But easier on the girls. Well, they're all down there, they're in the paddock, so um, it's time consuming actually, um, but got them there. So um, those girls go up there next, uh, yeah, up just behind there, um, and then these girls, these cows and uh, fatties can go into there. So. Um, few showers today and um, yeah it's been on and off but uh, probably I don't even know if I've had a meal. It's just been odd showers.